Stuff podcast where we're double the hosts, double the topics, and double the fun. And I'm Alan. I'm Dan. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jerry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, that one I, know. I, I had to do an Alan because he was normal with his I name. Did. I did. I played the street <laughs> man on that one. All right. Just for you, Alan. Well, we're still in December and we're having a great time. I hope that everybody's having a great holiday experience with oh, your yes. loved ones. Everybody's healthy and having a great time. What are some of the holiday traditions that you observe in december dan holiday traditions that we observe in december i mean i think the the biggest tradition that my wife and i have is we always set aside a day to do to decorate the tree to put it up with music and everything like that which is you know a pretty traditional thing to do a pretty traditional tradition Mm -hmm. Uh, but it's just something that we really enjoy and we we have always done really since we've been we've been together now for 18 years so you do the same tree or do you guys get a real tree well we have had multiples uh throughout the years so we we've had fake trees before uh we've had a real tree once that didn't work out very well i think we try to have one again we have cats so (laughs) they like to get into the dirt but um we need to actually get a new one this year so okay yep Fantastic. Ooh, it'd be like Charlie Brown. You're going to go get a really big aluminum tree. You're going to get a little branch with a, with a bobble hanging out. I would get one of those Charlie Brown trees. That would be good for you me. You can actually I mean, get those. Yeah, like a, I think at Barnes and Noble, no. get the Charlie Brown tree. I think tree. I've seen so a couple at Dylan's just <laughs> oh, yeah? so sad hanging oh, yeah. out in front of the door. <laughs> That's my jam uh, right there. Yeah. Well, you can probably put it on your desk, so you, you know, because it's not very big. So yeah. it, might not, it might not be like, this is the tree that the whole family is going <laughs> to see. But on know? Charlie Brown, they wave their hands. Yeah, they wave their hands. And all of a sudden, it's a big bushy tree with like lots of ornaments, because that's how you decorate a tree. I wish yeah. I had that hand waving power because I it's would totally, magic. Yeah, you I guys could, always think it's bizarre too. The the tree farm that Charlie like went to, it, it was like everything was pink and the and aluminum silver. trees. Yeah, yeah, they were, but they were outdoors. And I was yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> aluminum tree out. Well, <laughs> I don't. I don't know when uh, was it the fifties, sixties, sixties. I've like seen. I think I've it was seen, We're gonna have 60s. to refer yeah. to perhaps some older no, listeners. The, that... No, the cartoon came out. The cartoon <laughs> came out in nineteen sixty-five. But I have seen a lot of old pictures from probably early sixties, maybe late fifties, of aluminum Christmas trees. I think, outdoors. I've never seen them outdoors. Yeah. I mean, I, that, I'm, a, I'm assuming just always yeah. like bothered me. I was like, where's, where is he? And how does everybody, <laughs> I mean, I understand we're in an animation and there's some suspension of disbelief, but what is going on? That, that was one scene that always bothered me from that <laughs> special, maybe, maybe, which I watch every year. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> Charlie gosh. Brown Christmas trauma yeah. that yeah. Alan's gone through. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you, you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta play that uh-huh. every year. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we watch it's Christmas time again, Charlie Brown, which was probably made maybe about 30 30 years later something okay. like that 20 years later and it's an episode where it's not really a continuation of this but they're having to do a christmas play and and peppermint patty tries out she wants to be mary she ends up playing a sheep and <laughs> oh and she was mad that marcy got the part of mary because mary never wore glasses yeah oh. that, that, so that was, was her jealous. only problem mary never wore glasses so much. <laughs> and so yeah that that was a good one then sally only has one line she's an angel all she has to say is hark and she yeah. forgets her line. and she forgets her line well, it sounds line. like you and I share a tradition, which is watching the Charlie Brown. Is there any other traditions that you have, Sarah? Uh, in terms of individual or what we do yeah. as a family? Um, in, terms of indiv- <laughs> in terms of individual uh, traditions, I started doing this when I was in college. I, I watch a lot of classic British comedies. Shocker. But um, <laughs> there's a group, there's a duo I like called Morecambe and Wise, and one called the Two Ronnies, and some carry-ons. And they always... They were one of the big things they were known for was their Christmas specials. Mm. And back in the day, back in the seventies, when they aired it, that was their biggest one. Like millions of people watched it, and it was even believed that the Queen even watched it. So oh, it was wow. a big deal of a show. So I like. So me personally, I always try to watch all the Christmas Morecambe and Wise specials during December, um, and then other special British comedies. That's an individual thing I like. Okay. But in terms of what we do as a family, like I said, we watch Charlie Brown, Gosh, Frosty, Rudolph, all, all, all the Rankin and Bass. Yeah, mm-hmm. anything Rankin. Bass bass uh we talked to, last year we talked a little bit about emma otter's jug band christmas oh, yeah. um which is jim henson if you guys need to check that out mm-hmm. so yeah basically most of the cartoons and tv shows that most people have grown up in the past 50 60 years we've probably watched them all or close okay. to it how about you charity 
Well, I guess start individual first. Yeah, individual. So I guess separate from family traditions. Um, I feel like we talked about this before, but but my friends and I usually um, maybe a week or two before Christmas, we'll drive mm-hmm. around and look at all the Christmas lights. That's oh, a great I one. love mm-hmm. doing that. Yeah. and um, and I. I knew this, but I didn't know this. I didn't realize that like it was a big thing for some people. I used to work at Ferris Wheel Candy mm-hmm. Store in Wichita, and there was a lady that came in. And she was getting snacks. She's like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna go look at Christmas lights," and we rented out a limousine, and they're gonna drive Whoa. us all around. You know, That's so I fancy. thought so. Someday Thank I would you. like to do that, but for now That's we just terrific. take yeah. <laughs> we just take our personal cars. But I'm really excited Ooh, this year uh. um, because uh, a friend of mine moved to Japan earlier this year, but she recently oh. told us that she's coming home for Christmas. Oh great. So we'll still get to do our tradition and look at Christmas lights and stuff. So I'm very excited about that. That's cool. great. That's great. Yeah, one of the traditions that we enjoy, and it's it's a little bit of a splurge, but we like to do the Nutcracker. Mm. And this year, I'm having a tough time, and I'm going to have to go talk to uh, – I think I'm going to have to go to the box office at Century 2. I tried to do it online. But you know how when you go to, uh, to purchase tickets, mm-hmm. um, they'll show the auditorium, and then there's different zones for mm-hmm. pricing? For some reason, it is. Uh, I tried to do this on Saturday night uh, a few weeks ago. I couldn't do it. I couldn't buy tickets. Oh, interesting. Yeah, for some reason. Uh, anyway, I don't want to. I don't want to disparage the good people of Century <laughs> Two and how they run their business. But I would like to purchase tickets to the Nutcracker, <laughs> and I'm afraid I can't do it through your website. You know, so. the, I think we have a really good connection here because, according to last year's episode with the Christmas one, Dan was part of the Sugar Plum Fairy. He could probably hook us up with some tickets. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Dan. Are you in the show again this I got year, you Dan? No, <laughs> they just don't know it. They yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a flash mob. It's, it's pretty affordable. So, I mean, we will, um, for about, I, I think it's, the tiers are 55, 45, 35, and 25. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we're going to try to do that again this year. It's still okay. a lot of fun. And typically, they bring in, like, local celebrities to be, like, the, what is it, the, the gingerbread, uh, who's the gingerbread mom or with all the little gingerbread i've actually never seen the nutcracker so i i I can't help you yeah i'm trying to think so i don't i'm not familiar with the show that you're mama Mama ginger or something like that (laughs) i'm not familiar with like the the production that you're talking about but a few years ago at the orpheum they had the like russian ballet troupe or whatever come and do the and we went and saw that version yeah that was a lot darker though and much more serious (laughs) Okay. No. Yeah, I heard the original of the Nutcracker is very dark. Well, and I know that um, Hutchinson does a prairie Nutcracker, and hmm. they do a lot of um, horses and stuff. Not horses, but it's more Kansas theme. It's more frontiersy, pioneersy. The dance of the sunflower. Fairy. Well, instead of like, <laughs> instead of it being in an aristocratic house with a little girl that falls asleep and has this dream, it's um, like a little girl in a log cabin. Um, hmm. So it's pretty much whatever. So it's, it's the Nutcracker meets Little House yeah, on the Prairie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's James R. Re- James R. Meade turns into the Nutcracker, <laughs> <It's> the <laughs> and then he goes on to found the city of Wichita. But that's that's one of the traditions that that we enjoy. Hmm. But that's something that we started as adults, my wife and I, and hopefully it's something that my kids will continue to enjoy and take with them throughout their lives, and. With that, is there any charity, um, is there any sort of tradition that that you started with as a child that has continued into adulthood? Well, I think I think we talked about this last year, but our family, if we're moving to family things now, um, we always do Christmas cookies on Christmas Eve. Yes, um, yes. And if you look at old photo albums, like there's, I think there's a picture, I think I'm like sitting in a high chair or something. Like, so this started when we were really little. Okay. And <laughs> uh, my mom said that Sarah used to get mad at me because we would, you know, do frosting on the cookies. Well, oh, cookies yeah. are made for eating. So as soon as I frosted, I popped she- that sucker in my mouth and Sarah's like no you're supposed to let it sit and be pretty you know and I'm sitting there with cookie in my mouth like no this is to eat like (laughs) I know what I'm doing yeah but um, we we still do that Um, we're actually doing cookies on the 23rd this year because I have to work Christmas Eve do you do uh, cookie exchange we exchange it amongst <laughs> ourselves. <I mean. laughs> they exchange from the plate to my yeah. mouth. That's something that I got introduced to when I, we were in California, and I thought that was really cool. Like a, a lot of families would bake, I think, like two dozen 
cookies. You go to a house, and then um, you just you just start like trading, and and you end up with all kinds of different cookies. And I think that's a cool tradition. I don't know who I would trade cookies with. I don't I, have I, any. I, I, it, yeah, it, it, we will see. And the thing is, when we well, you got to start we... with cookies. You can't eat them while. You're <laughs> When, I when can't we, pass off an empty plate. When That's we right. do our cookies, it's not just oh cute sprinkles and M and M's. Like it turns into a legit art project. Yeah, when That's we do true. our cookies. So it's more than just oh it's a it's a snowflake and you put icing and M and M's on. Like like it, and kind of what Charity said. If you look at some older pictures. It it looks like we did some sculpting and painting, like you know, we we, 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 mm-hmm. yeah, we would do like like <laughs> celebrities, like I think I did like Charlie Chaplin and Harold Lloyd and Charity and Christy would do like the monkeys and the Beatles. Christy, our little sister, is probably the best at the cookies. Yeah, uh, she like and she, she'll save her cookies. She'll keep them in the freezer for like a long time. So it'll be like March, and I'm like, you still got them cookies out there? But They're she'll too yeah. pretty. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Or she'll make like a really big cookie and just kind of nibble, nibble, nibble. <laughs> yeah. and it'll be like she's Easter, and she still has like a piece of cookie uh, left. I when I would have eaten that the day after, like the, get with the big chocolate Easter bunny. Yeah, but she'll eat it. In a little bits at a time. Little, yeah, first a little bit of the year, <laughs> then a little bit of the tail, but it's in the freezer forever. And then by June, I'm like, this is out of here. By yeah. June, you see this chocolate like, rabbit's foot. It's not even lucky it's anymore. A little yeah. freezer burn bunny that's just sitting out there, lonely and forgotten. You? How about you, Sarah? <laughs> in terms of childhood stuff, the the cookies are the big ones for us. Um, and we've mentioned decorating the the the, the tree and everything. Um, I think one thing that we haven't done or we we didn't do until we moved to kansas because at the houses that we had we had like mobile homes and stuff we didn't have a fireplace Mm. and so when we Mm. first moved here the first house we had while it wasn't the best house it was our first time having a fireplace and it was just really cool to have fires are so cool Mm -hmm. yeah it's just like it's just like on tv you know you have a little crackling fire and then you have you know silent night playing in the distance yeah Mm -hmm. you know and then we're all just kind of sitting there enjoying the warmth yeah Outside yeah, it was, it's like it's like a Courier and Ives postcard, which mm. is a, uh, for another song. <laughs> yeah. But then we moved to a couple other different houses that didn't have fireplaces, and so I always felt like it was missing because we had been so yeah. used to having it. And so now uh, the new house that we moved into has it. So we're, we're really my, – my dad is so excited because it'll be our first Christmas in a new house, and he's like, we're going to have a fire. Good. And it's going to be you know, warm, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> we haven't had a really cold Christmas in a while. Not in a while. That's true. Last year was – Cool. Uh, do you guys remember that? Well, yeah, no, I was in Florida. It, it, wouldn't, oh, okay. <laughs> it didn't yeah. get cold until like... It didn't like, get cold until January. January. Cold in, in Tampa is probably, what, 55? 50 hey, I had to put shoes on instead of sandals <laughs> one day, so... That's a first yeah. world problem, referring back to those episodes. <laughs> well, how about you, Dan? Do you have any childhood traditions? That Not continued? like a lot of traditions that we've continued, but you know, we continue to try to make some new ones. So mm-hmm. like with, with my side of the family anyway, more recently we've been taking uh, trips around christmas mm-hmm. so usually like uh directly after christmas or something like that so like we've gone to new york to visit family before um and then a few years ago we went to colorado and we mm-hmm. all stayed in like an airbnb and we went to the denver zoo to look at their lights and then we went to this nice oh. little town called georgetown that's like outside of denver it's like up in the mountains they have like mm-hmm. a christmas train that like okay. you get on this old train oh, and, like, like a goes polar express the kind of thing well they just like mm-hmm. and they set up lights and everything so mm-hmm. like um it's it's you know, and there's snow everywhere, and oh, it's really wow. nice. Oh, that's very picturesque, mm-hmm. just the way. It that is. that would be fun. That would that was something that I'd always. Well, we did that one time. There's a a Polar Express that that's outside of somewhere outside of Topeka, but uh, you get like on an old train car and, and a dining car and and do like the Polar Express. That's that's pretty fun. Yeah. I do have a question though, since we were talking about childhood traditions, is it more difficult to create? traditions like as adults because i know you know me we talked about you know me and sarah we always do christmas cookies on christmas eve but we've been doing that since we were really little but i i remember a few years ago my mom was like how about we do handmade christmas ornaments and we did that one year and we haven't gone back because it was a complete (laughs) disaster like we didn't have enough supplies and stuff was breaking and not going Mm -hmm. together and i feel like we argued at one point because somebody had the popsicle sticks we want like it was it was a whole mess so Mm -hmm. it's like okay is that did that not work because we're adults like, now? Yeah, did, like, did is you that grow out? Grow out of yeah. Or? So, is it difficult when you're That's older? A good question. I don't know. I, 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 I think for um, it's one of those weird things that kind of coalesce. Uh, you start off with just an activity, and then somehow there's enough good memories surrounding it that it continues. Yeah, and, and it'll keep it going even. 
I remember as a child, my uh, mom would have, it wasn't quite an advent calendar, but it was, it was like a, a, a giant piece of uh, ribbon, but it was like thick, almost like a, like a barbershop strope for like mm, a mm-hmm. razor blade or something like that. Mm. And then there was uh, strings that were tied to it. And it was like an advent calendar with um, little pieces of candy that were tied to it. And every day, oh, it was so, it was <laughs> so torturous because you could only get one. You could only piece, get one. Yeah. And, but you could see all the other pieces <laughs> of candy. That, and it was right by the door. And uh, that was in our first home on college and since then um we have an advent calendar at our house and we have a michelle the elf that uh, brings on the shelf an elf on the shelf or or michelle is what we call it in the (laughs) trailer i don't know uh one of my daughters uh named her michelle uh i think it was because she had a teacher at daycare or preschool that she really liked um and she was a sweet lady too her name was michelle anyway adopted the name and so our elf on the shelf fills up the the advent calendar with candy every night, and it's always fun. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think if you if you set out to explicitly make a new tradition, I think that's hard because there's like a lot of pressure on it, mm-hmm. and then maybe yeah. not everybody's as interested in it or something that's right. like the person that suggested. But if you just do something that's fun, and then you're like, well, we want to do that again next year because it was mm-hmm. fun, then I think that's where it ends up becoming a tradition. Yeah. yeah. One of the things too with those traditions that are fun that have good memory and people want to recreate, you better make sure you can afford it every year. Too. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so some of those do get a little yeah. costly. I don't know if we can always go to the Rose Bowl, but no. <laughs> Pasadena is awesome. But I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can always do that every year. And I think we're talking about in creating. My last topic is is creating new traditions. And is there any new traditions that you've seen? I mean, we've we've all watched plenty of Hallmark movies. We've watched uh, or or have you know seen through social media other people's traditions is there anyone that has a tradition that they've seen that they'd love to incorporate into their own but Mm. don't know if they can quite squeeze it in we we tried to make gingerbread cookies one year and put too much oil in it so then we just had these (laughs) weird slippery gingerbread so we learned that maybe gingerbread baking might not be our strong suit well if i remember correctly they they were nasty yeah (laughs) we we failed but in terms of something that i would like to do in the future um i think just because everything i've done christmas wise which i would love to do from from between now and you know the end of the world or whatever um is fun but i've never done anything i guess of a romantic nature you know because this is always time of year too that according to movies like you say you know you have your hallmark movies and lifetime mm-hmm. movies and it's like oh it's snowing on christmas eve well that deserves a nice kiss mm. you know or something <laughs> so it's like i haven't had like a romantic reason to enjoy christmas it's just oh, okay. been either me as an individual or with family so I think that'll give it a little bit. I think I'm sure that'll give it different perspective once that happens. Well, sure. So we'll, well, we shall see okay. what we shall see with that. Well, since we were talking about Hallmark movies, something that I've seen in a lot of the movies is that there are carolers like going door to door. Yeah. So I, I, that's very cute in a movie, but I can't see myself walking in neighborhoods singing. One, it's like freaking cold and windy. Like, yeah, like that's just first. Yeah, no, you have yeah. The spirit. <laughs> yeah. Well, the well like, spirit. Uh, but if someone showed up at my door, like. Like, I don't answer the door unless I know you're coming over. <laughs> so, like, if someone's trying to sing outside oh, my door, mom, okay. yeah, I'm like, I'm not opening the door. <laughs> like, who host. are you guys? <laughs> 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 But in, in theory, caroling door to door, I guess would be fun. I guess it would have to be a certain location, kind of like ha- at Halloween in Wichita, everybody goes to College Hill. Uh-huh. So I guess if everybody knows we're going to College Hill to carol, then people aren't going to freak out that you're at the door. I'm sure you yeah. could find a uh, like a group or like a, like a WSU choir or a, well, I'm not or a, a local high student, school. Choir. I guess. I mean, most people. No, what I'm saying is, uh, I'm sure that there are community uh, organizations that do it too. Well, most people it, go to. The nursing go home. to a nurse yes. yeah, it, yeah. It, it, well, a nursing remember home. last year's and Christmas episode cheer. Cherry talked about the, the trials and tribulations of trying to get people to, to come to a nursing home to sing oh that's true so, well, so and, you've done it well <laughs> I feel like that would be annoying for the old people because they don't get visitors well aside from COVID but they don't get visitors all year long all of a sudden at Christmas time everybody wants to come and sing to them and then yeah. Christmas is over where are y'all at you know nobody's gonna come that visit that might be so. their one time up for joy Charity <laughs> I mean, you could start Arbor Day caroling. (laughs) Oh, tree. Oh, tree. Regular old tree. Regular old tree. 
<laughs> that, that'll be our double stuff tradition. Hey, if all four of us want to go caroling on Arbor, Arbor Day, Day, I'm for it. I'll do it. I'll do it with you guys. For Arbor Man yeah. to come. And, and Arbor Man. <laughs> all right. Well, that's great. Um, I had a lot of fun and talking about traditions. I love um, that you guys have great traditions. And if you have any traditions that you'd like to share with us, please feel free to comment. And Sarah's going to let you know where you can comment. Yeah, so check us out on all of our different social media platforms. We are available on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube at Double Stuff Podcast. And of course, all of our episodes are archived on our website. You can listen to all of our holiday episodes that we did last year, episodes 31 to 40. And that's at DoubleStuffPod.com. And of course, check us out on Twitter at DoubleStuffP. And that's the letter P. A regular tree. I was just going to do it. I was just going to say that. How normal are the branches? <laughs> <laughs>